welcome back to our channel in this video we will see the important topic in the upper limb mammary gland it may be asked as an essay all the lymphatic drainage of mammary gland will be asked as short notes those who are not subscribed to our channel do subscribe now keep watching the videos our channel is a complete anatomy channel it contains more than 270 anatomy videos which will really help you to score good marks in the university exam so we will move on to the topic mammary gland the mammary gland is present bilaterally in both the sexes in the pectoral region that is the first dissection you are going to start in the first endibius it's a modified sweat gland so this has no distinct fibrous capsule so this is the mammary gland situated in the pectoral region you can appreciate the muscle beneath this pectoralis major so this is present in the pectoral region and it is prominent in the females after puberty and in male and in the females before puberty they are rudimentary now we will see the extent of the mammary gland if you see the extent we have to see the circular base extent it extends vertically from the second to the sixth rib in the mid clavicular line so in that line only you have to count second to sixth rib horizontally if you see from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line that is the mid line of the axilla you have to understand this this is the modified sweat gland present in the superficial fascia so that is the very interesting feature of this uh, big gland situated in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region so if you see the mammary bed the base of the gland rests on the following structures they it will be called as the mammary bed you see in the medial two thirds pectoralis major in the lateral one third serratus anterior a small part in the intromedial quadrant external oblique aponeurosis it separates the mammary gland that is this external oblique aponeurosis and anterior abdominal wall muscle so it separates this mammary gland from the rectus abdominis another anterior abdominal wall muscle we will see the picture you can see this is pectoralis major that is medial part resting on pectoralis major lateral part resting on the serratus anterior we will be learning in the upper limb muscle serratus anterior and the lower medial part rests on the external oblique which is separating over the rectus abdominis so, so that is will be called as the mammary bed for the mammary gland there is another retro mammary space beneath this mammary bed we have the retro mammary space containing loose connective tissue and this that separates this mammary gland from the deeper structures then what is axillary tail of spans so there is a tail like projection from the upper and outer quadrant of the gland it is entering the axilla so we have learned just now it is present in the pectoral region but this projection is extending into the axilla that opening will be called as foramen of langer the student should understand only this axillary tail part is present beneath the deep fascia so that if we can see the axillary tail of spans so can you appreciate this is the axillary tail of spans so this opening through which it enters the axilla will be called as foramen of langer this part is deep to the deep fascia now we will learn the features in the skin overlying the breast and the structure of the mammary gland also so structure of the mammary gland if you see this is the nipple a conical or cylindrical projection below the center of the mammary gland it is usually at the level of the fourth 
intercostal space. In nulliparous females, so if you see this nipple is pierced by 15 to 20 lactiferous ducts, so that this uh, this opening of the lactiferous duct opens into the nipple. Then if you see surrounding the nipple, we have the areola. It is a pigmented circular area of the skin around the base of the nipple. So this nipple and this areola is irreversibly darkened after first pregnancy. If you see this areola, outer margin of this areola contains, we will see that tubercles of Montgomery. We will see in the next slide. So we have seen this already. Nipple, it is pierced by 15 to 20 lactiferous duct. Beneath the areola, each lactiferous duct is dilated to form lactiferous sinus. If you see the areola, it is pigmented circular area of skin. Outer margin of the areola contains modified sebaceous glands which are enlarged during pregnancy so that it will be called as tubercles of Montgomery. So we have seen in the skin overlying the mammary gland, nipple and areola. If you see the difference between the male and female mammary gland, this male mammary gland is composed of duct system and without alveoli and it is also supported by fibro fatty tissue. But this breast or mammary gland in the male does not extend beyond the margin of the areola. So now we will see the detailed structure of this mammary gland. What is this mammary gland is made of glandular tissue, fibrous tissue and interlobar fatty tissue. Glandular tissue if you, is tubuloalveolar type. If you see the fibrous tissue, we will see the picture supporting the parenchyma to this. What you see? They are called as suspensory ligaments of Cooper. In this picture, all, you are seeing also the repromammary space, which is separating the mammary gland from the pectoralis major. So we have seen this is the glandular uh, tissue that is alveoli. Now this is fibrous tissue. So that is uh, supporting this mammary gland and also fatty tissue. So this fibrous tissue supports the lobes. It forms number of septa connecting the underlying pectoral fascia. So they are called as suspensory ligaments of Cooper. You see what is this importance? Clinical importance is malignant cells may grow along these ligaments. So that causes the fixation of the uh, mammary gland tumor to the pectoralis major. This fatty tissue makes this mammary gland round in contour. But if you see beneath the areola and the nipple, fat is absent. So we have learned. So this lactiferous duct dilatation beneath the nipple will be called as lactiferous sinus. So we have already seen what is this glandular tissue is made of alveoli. So this glandular tissue will be separated by this fibrous tissue into 15 to 20 pyramidal lobule, lobes. So this 15 to 20 pyramidal lobe, the area of breast parenchyma drained by one terminal duct will be called as lobule. So it is 15 to 20 pyramidal lobes in each primary gland which consists of many lobules. So you, you can learn all these hormones acting on the mammary gland, estrogen, progesterone during normal menstruation cycle and also during pregnancy that is placental. Oxytocin which stimulates the milk uh, ejection. All this you will be learning again in the physiology of the secretion of the mammary gland. Arterial supply of the breast or mammary gland. We have two arteries from the axillary artery. Lateral thoracic artery, so this is the large artery, which is lateral thoracic artery, so which is supplying the lateral part of the gland. This lateral thoracic artery, again, superior thoracic artery supplies the upper part of the gland. Perforating branches of this internal thoracic artery, 
which will supply the medial part of the gland, it will be called as medial mammary branches. So this mammary gland along with the structure, arterial supply, venous drainage and lymphatic drainage may be asked as SA. So if you see the venous drainage, this veins form a plexus around the areola which will be called as surplus venosus. From this plexus, the veins radiate to the periphery, drain into axillary vein. Same arteries will be in the veins. You have to remember in every place. Mostly it will be the same names. So axillary, internal thoracic, but this is different, posterior intercostal vein. So this through this, it drains into the azygous system of veins, which communicate with the intracranial, first with the internal vertebral venous plexus, then into the cranium, intracranial venous sinuses. Why we have to know this importance is, this carcinoma of the mammary gland may spread its secondary to this vertebra. Now supply of the mammary gland from the 4th to 6th intercostal nerves, they also carry the sympathetic fibers. Lymphatic drainage of the mammary gland, you have to learn under two headings. Those draining the parenchyma of the breast, including the areola on the nipple, then overlying the skin. First we will learn the parenchyma. From the parenchyma, this lymphatic plexus, they form this sub areolar plexus of saphi beneath the areola and the nipple so that again now they drain into about 75% of the lymphatic drainage from the mammary gland is into the anterior group of axillary lymph nodes. So this is the anterior group 75%. So that is the main nodes for the mammary gland. They accompany the lateral thoracic artery. 20% they drain along the internal mammary into the parasternal group of lymph nodes or internal mammary lymph nodes. About 5% of lymphatics from the lateral and posterior parts, they follow the intercostal vessels to drain into posterior intercostal or intercostal nodes. So this is the lymphatic drainage from the parenchyma of the mammary gland. From the overlying skin, it also drains into the axillary lymph nodes from the outer part, from the upper part, supraclavicular lymph nodes, again into this apical group of axillary lymph nodes. Inner part, parasternal nodes. We have to know this from the lower part. This is very important. From the lower part, commute this lymphatics, communicate with this rectus sheet in the anterior abdominal wall to form the subperitoneal lymph, flux, lymph fluxes. So by piercing the upper part of linea alba, linea alba, this is linea alba in the center of the anterior abdominal wall, linea alba, by piercing this, it enters this subperitoneal plexus so that they drain into the subdiaphragmatic lymph nodes. So this is diaphragm here. So subdiaphragmatic lymph nodes and also into the hepatic nodes around the bile duct. So that if these nodes are enlarged, they may spread this carcinoma into the ovary. So that this will be called as this cancer cells, they migrate on their own by transcelomic migration. And they may produce secondary deposits on the surface of the ovary. It will be called as crookan Burks tumor. So secondary deposits in the ovary will be called as crookan Burks tumor. So we have learnt in this, uh, till now, we have learnt the situation, extent, along with the features of the skin overlying the mammary gland and structure of the mammary gland, difference between the male and the female mammary gland. And also we have learned the arterial supply, venous drainage and lymphatic drainage. Now the applied anatomy or clinical anatomy of the mammary gland. If you see this carcinoma of the mammary gland is common. You will be learning what is carcinoma is. And all the types of the tumor in the second year. For, but important 
tumor is carcinoma so if this mammary gland is affected by carcinoma this cancer cells spread along the suspensory ligaments of the cooper so that they form fixation of the tumor to the underlying pectoral fascia then extension of this growth along the lactiferrous so one is through the cooper ligament another is along the lactiferrous duct so that nipple is retracted inside which is projecting outside in the normal it is now retracted so this is the retracted nipple you can appreciate one more clinical applied aspect is qd orange that is the skin of the orange uh, fruit that is the appearance in the qd orange causes hair follicles over the lump appear to be retracted causes obstruction of the cutaneous lymphatics which cause stagnation of the lymph and edema of the lymph this resembles the skin of the orange hence it is called as pudy orange so this is the pudy orange appearance due to the obstruction of the cutaneous lymphatics so this appearance will be called as pudy orange so this carcinoma is very important even in the male it is uh, it can spread to the second it can cause secondary deposits the male carcinoma is also has to be considered as important not only in the female so we have completed this mammary gland in detail which is the first important essay in the upper limb i hope you should have understood this if you have any doubts you can post in this comment box so that i will answer those who are not subscribed to the channel do subscribe now keep watching the videos the next topic is topic in the upper limb we will see in the next video thank you